All right, we rolling? Uh, yeah, I th- you, yeah, uh, uh, yes. You have an hour. Excellent. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to 296 or 7, 7 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and I'm joined today by an AI generative uh, text-to-speech model of former producer Keelan, may he rest in peace. Uh, you may notice a few bugs with the program. It's not, uh, it, it, uh, because I'm using ChatGPT, it's uh, Keelan's general opinions about the homeless. It just won't say uh, what Keelan actually thinks because it violates the terms. What are your thoughts on people who are poor, Keelan, but... <laughs> I don't have an opinion. Yeah, see, there's a few bugs with it, um, but uh, but look, for the most part, uh, I think it'll be I think it'll be fine. What did you do this week, uh, Keelan? Uh, Stop generating. <laughs> um, welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome to the show. Uh, it's going to be a good one. I am so sick uh, of my cat. <laughs> I'm fucking over it and I have a bone to pick with you Keelan. I'm re- I'm really upset with you, okay? Because <laughs> my cat, you may re- if you saw me live and if you remember a couple of podcasts ago, all right? Uh, we adopted a new cat. Oh well, my my girl adopted a new cat. I was out of the home at the time mm. and it was out of my hands. We c- we come home and now we have a, a cat that won't stop attempting to have sexual relations with the incredibly old cat that wants nothing to do with him. And it look, it was a little bit funny at first, but now it's just, we just have like a guy that doesn't understand consent in the house <laughs> and keeps following her around. It's incredibly disruptive to the entire house. We have to separate them all the time. We took him to the vet to check that he'd been, that he'd been de-sexed properly. Yeah. We took, because apparently that's something that happens every now and then, is uh, apparently uh, cat nuts are so small they can get missed sometimes during de-sexing and sometimes you can th- you think you've got a de-sex cat mm. but he actually has one ball um similar to hitler uh which is quite like my cat so we take him to the vet and uh and uh, they go no nah, nothing wrong with him uh he's he's just a rapist oh. um which which is a shame so so i go to keelan okay i go hey keelan would you like a cat because we love him we do love him but he was absolutely a mistake. You know, a lot of people feel like that about their own children. Uh, but children are harder to rehome, right? So with this cat, we, we thought, well, Keelan likes cats. You grew up with cats, didn't you? Yeah, I, I you did love cats. Love him. And, uh, and I, I mentioned to you, oh, we've got this cat. We, we love him dearly because he's, he's an amazing cat, but he's definitely like a no other cats in the house type guy. Yeah. Because if there are other cats in the house, he's like, I smell pussy. <laughs> And, and he'll act on it. Yep. Um, so, Keelan goes, I would love to take, take the cat. I, I actually yep. really like Ziggy. This is misleading. I think he's great. <laughs> and, and we go, oh, well, that's, that's perfect. Because, misleading. Because, uh, <laughs> stop generating. Because <laughs> this is great for us because you love cats and we love the cat. We don't want to let him go. But if you take him, we could visit him. So, you go, I just, <laughs> I just, I just have, to, I have to run this by my girlfriend, Phoebe. Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, which... I would have loved for Jasmine to do with me when yeah. she adopted the cat was, hey, should we get another cat? Because yeah. I would have said no. Yeah, yeah. Um, in fact, I did say no, but she got the cat anyway. You said no three times. I said no three times. <laughs> three, three, se- three days in a row, I said no. And then she said, when you get home, there's going to be a cat here. And I went, great. Well, let's see how this goes. And now we're trying to rehome him. And uh, love the cat, <laughs> love my girlfriend. And, I, and I, I still have not said, I told you so. Yeah, I would love to, <laughs> but I know the consequences of that. If you, if you, I don't know if anyone listening to this show has ever had a girlfriend before. Probably not, but it, but but there's three words that can destroy your relationship, and it's I told you so. Yeah, I've and never, we don't say that. I've never said them either. You should never say them, but sometimes you can give them a look. <laughs> yeah, and that and, and that's and that's as close as you can get. That's dangerous, but it's still it's almost as good as going. Told you so, man. Um, so, so we we wanted to rehome this cat because we want him to go to a good home. We're not going to be one of those people that adopt something and then go Ugh! and then send it back to the shelter because he's a black cat. He won't get adopted. He'll get put down. He's they a sick cat. He's a, he's he's a legend. He's a lovely, lovely guy mm. to us, uh, but to the other female cats, they don't like him and they have a lot of a lot of reasons. Now we said to Keelan, "Would you like to take the cat?" And he said, "Yes, I would love the cat." Let me just run it by Phoebe. Now I have a bone to pick this with is you. Incredibly misleading. No, it's not. And not the full. Not the full conversation. Okay, what am I missing? What info am I missing so far? Without spoiling the end, what am I missing? It was very much like if 
our other friend doesn't want it. Yeah. Would you take it? I said, I would love to. Yeah. It's up to Phoebe. I'll consider it. Yeah. I'll talk to Phoebe. Okay. Right. And then- That, I, that sentence I, was just a synonym of what I've just said the <laughs> no, whole time. I texted you. Yeah. I uh, asked a few questions about the cat and you yeah. said, you said, yeah. don't get attached. It's probably going to our other friend. Yes, I, I did say I had that. other friends. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and I said. Uh, you said, don't get attached. So I took yeah. that as we won't be getting this cat. And I said, you might not be getting it because they have you first You said, dips. don't get attached, which means. So Probably in your not. head, you were like, oh, well, fuck this guy. Fuck this cat. I hate him. And then I spoke to Phoebe. Yeah. I gave Phoebe the cell that Jasmine gave me. Yes. That he's a rapist, but he's cool. See, now there's your problem, <laughs> all right? You never lead with rape, all right? That was your selling point. You're but, like, hey, he's a rapist. Do you want to have him in the house? But I kept saying he's very cool. Yeah. And okay. Like, well, what? so what? Like he's Michael Jackson or something? I Don't worry, he can moonwalk. I showed her all the pictures. Jasmine sent me pictures yeah. of him in the dishwasher, yeah, in, hanging out, all these kind of things. Yeah. And she was like, "He's great," but then ultimately, yeah, we're probably moving next year again right. to a different state, and it's yeah. probably not fair to take a cat with us because we're we're not settled. He would love it. He would. He loves moving. Every day he wakes up and he goes, "I hate Victoria." <laughs> he does. He tells me this. He goes, "I hate Victoria." Yeah, and you I want to have him. Huh? Have you still got him? Yeah, go get him. Go get him. He's a he's a honestly he's a wonderful cat. If you're a human, if you're a female cat, he's he should be in prison. He's not a good guy, and I I desperately want to get rid of him, but I love him, so I want him to go to a good home. So you know what? Maybe it's better off that Keelan doesn't take him. Um, so look, I can't I can't believe that this that this fucking idiot starts off. Selling this cat by going, oh, by the way, he doesn't know what consent is. Also, why is it even a problem? Phoebe's not a cat, so I don't, I don't, I don't know what she's afraid of. Okay, he's never tried anything on with Jasmine. Maybe if she had four legs, she'd be in trouble. <laughs> see, he's a legend. Give him here so they can see. He's such a cool guy. Like, if you had, if you were, like, would anyone listening? Does anyone want this? Because I don't. <laughs> Who wants it? Someone, please, for the love of God, take him. He's, isn't he such a cool cat? He, he's cool with anything as long as, as long as he's being moved around. He's totally happy to do whatever. See, what he really hates is just sitting down and, 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 and being held. Being stationary is, is this cat's kryptonite. But, uh, yeah, he's absolutely a mistake. I would like to apologize. I didn't think that I had convinced you that I was going to take him. I, I really thought it was kind of like a... Both me and Jazz were so relieved. Like, oh, good, he's gonna have a he's gonna have a good home, and we'll still be able to visit him. But and you, maybe when Keelan comes do the to do the podcast, he could bring him over. But you never you all you made it out that I wasn't getting it. it was just a cool idea. I didn't want you to fall in love with him just in case the other household would take. Look, it turns turns out it's very difficult to to home a rapist. <laughs> Are you, you know? able to? I don't know how the Catholic Church does it. Does someone they else move him around all the time. Very successfully. We can take him short term, but we can't have him for the rest of our lives. How's that? Okay, deal. Okay. All right. But just the rest of his life. No. <laughs> the rest of it. No, we can't have him for the rest of his life. I'll take him for six months, but I can't have him. Right. You know, I'll take him to the end of my lease. How's that? All right. Fair. Cool. But then we have to give him back. Yep. Deal. Deal. The the <laughs> the the vet was like, look, either um, either you put him on medication or you hope he grows out of it. Mm. But the the older he gets, the further down puberty he goes. So I don't know I don't know if he's I think he's growing into it and I think he's really filling these shoes. He's stoked actually. Um but anyway, more importantly, okay, other than than my than my beef with you, I have a problem uh I think that I'm going to go to prison uh pretty <laughs> quick cuz I I accidentally committed a series of crimes uh in rapid succession recently yeah. and uh and and uh, crimes I've never committed before. So uh, recently, Jazz and I, we had to move a bunch of things, moving a lot of furniture. So we uh, hired uh, a car from a rental place, big car with a big tray in the back of it just to move. We had to move like a couple of, we bought some bookshelves. We had to move bookshelves. So that's all we needed. All we needed was like a, a van is what we we rented, like a big white van. Yeah. Um, now, what we got when we got to the rental place was a, a literal truck like a moving truck. They had given the van away accidentally and they were like, oh, all we have left is a truck. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, oh, 
is she even allowed to drive this or do you need a truck license? And they go, oh, it should be fine. And we go, all right, cool. So we go to pick up these bookshelves and we show up in like a truck that you would move a house in, like huge. <laughs> like I could, you, you could sit on my shoulders in the truck, right. in the back of it. It was massive. So overkill for moving two bookshelves. Um, but uh, Jazz is driving it because I don't even have my regular car's license. Uh, and Jazz is driving a truck she's never driven before. Did an excellent job. All right. Uh, while I was doing the real work of figuring out how to manage the playlist, because it was <laughs> it was Bluetooth, which is difficult. You know, that's a lot. That's a lot harder than driving a truck. Is figuring out how to connect your phone to the rental truck's Bluetooth, because there are other phones that are connected to it, and and you have to figure out which one's yours, and then input the password, and all of the real work um, that that really goes on when 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 the fucking slacker is just driving the truck. I'm really, <laughs> really, really providing the vibes here. But it was like a three seater truck, so huge, lengthways, height, massive, huge truck, and. Um, we move all this stuff and it was a big hassle because we had to figure out how to strap everything down inside the truck and all of these extra hassles. You know, I'm getting out of the truck to help Jazz reverse and all of this stuff. We have to make a few stops. We're, we're paranoid searching up like height limits along our route because the <laughs> truck's like fucking massive and we've, do we have, do we have to go under Montague Bridge? <laughs> All this stuff. We had to go into the city and then we had to go like back to Frankston, down to South Frankston to pick up two different, the same bookshelf from two different people on Facebook Marketplace, like wildly different areas in this massive truck. Real stressful, but we managed to do it all successfully, paid everyone, everyone was happy, right? And then we go, uh, we, we load the stuff off at ours and then we leave again, we take it back to the rental place and we get there and obviously you have to refill the truck with petrol, um, when you get there, because it's a rental, so I start doing that, and it's diesel. And I've, I don't know if you've ever, if you've ever filled a truck before. Yeah. I don't know if they're all like this, but it's just a drum. There's no like tank that you like. You put the thing in and then you fill it up. It's just like a fucking plastic tub underneath the truck, and you just have to stop filling it up before it overflows. Yeah. I've never done that before. <laughs> So I'm fucking trying to fill this diesel thing up and I'm reading all the warning signs like, <laughs> make sure you're grounded, make sure it doesn't overfill. Warning, it will not automatically stop like every other gas tank does. Uh, and I'm then I'm like, fuck, is this even diesel? Is it the, the stuff that also like flushes out really quickly? Yeah, real yeah, quick. Yeah, high flow, yeah. Yeah, high flow, spraying everywhere. <laughs> Felt like I was on fucking Pornhub. So I'm filling up this thing and I just got paranoid about it overflowing because it was also, it was nighttime. So I couldn't see how full the diesel tank thing was. So I ended up just, I think I only filled it up 60% of the way. And I was so freaked out about this. And then we, we, we gave it back halfway through. It was almost closed, the rental place. So I just finish i go fuck this i'm not filling it up all the way i don't care and then i put it back and then uh the guy f from the rental comes out uh to get the truck and he goes g'day guys and i'm like hey man and uh and i jumped out of the passenger seat and he goes oh how come you're not driving and i go oh i don't i don't have a i don't have a license and he goes oh you only have a car's license i'm like oh uh yeah i yeah <laughs> And he goes, oh, you never got a truck license. But she got a truck license. I'm like, yeah, she did. So she's been driving for fucking four hours, no truck license oh. in this thing that they gave to us. We didn't know. We asked. <laughs> we go, you sure you don't need a truck license? And the guy's like, ah, it should be all right. Oh, my God. The guy we dropped it off to was like, uh, you don't have your truck license, mate. I'm like, no. And he goes, oh, but she does. And I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, he, I didn't know your sister was a lesbian. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then oh and then, uh, and then, he goes, oh, I'll, I'll take it. And we go, no, we've got some stuff in the back. So we open up the back of it and and we start loading uh, the shit into the into the back, uh, out of the back, back into Jasmine's car, mm -hmm. and uh, and then and then he starts closing up. He he helped us move a couple of things back to the car, and then he helps us close the thing, and then uh, and then he goes, uh, yeah, all right, mate, thank you very much. See you later, and we and we leave, and then um, all good, uh, and he goes, I'll take the truck and. Uh, See you later, guys. We're like, okay, sweet. And then we leave, and then and then uh, we go home that night, and um, we wake up the next day to like twenty five missed calls from the rental place, mm -hmm. um, and I can't find my wallet, um, and <laughs> in my wallet, 
right? I lost my wallet. The the worst in my wallet. This is like right after the comedy festival. So in my wallet is like two thousand dollars of cash <laughs> from the merch sales. And also, like, 15 SD cards, like, all the footage yeah. of the entire run because I was not I was staying at my parents' place because it's close to the city. So every single fucking show that's filmed and about $2,000 in cash is sitting <laughs> in this fucking truck in a rental. I'm going, oh, my God, I'm never going to get it back. Because my last wallet, I had an air tag in it. Yeah. And I lost it, right, on a train. That's right. And I never got it back despite knowing exactly where it was. <laughs> All right, so I was like, fuck the air tag, they're useless if I lose the wallet. <laughs> so now I'm like, why didn't I get a fucking air tag? Where's my wallet? Looking for it everywhere. I don't know where it is. And then we check Jasmine's phone and she's got fucking 25 missed calls from the rental place. And uh, and uh, so we call them back and we, we're, we're about to go, hey, I left my, I left my wallet. And uh, this guy answers... And he goes, did you really think you'd get away with it? I'm like, what? And he goes, you didn't pay for the petrol or the truck. <laughs> <laughs> and you left your wallet here, so you're going to have to come back and get it. Oh my and in the, in the fucking confusion of talking to the guy and deloading the truck, we never paid for the truck and we fucking stole the petrol. <laughs> never paid for it. And then I fucking left my wallet in there like a dumb cunt, full of cash. Oh my god! So we go back there, and on it's truly just an honest mistake. But I get there, and the guy's pissed off because he must have paid for it. Because I think what the guy was doing that that what what we were supposed to do was obviously pay for the fucking petrol because it would have been like I think it was like it was a truck, right? So it was like, like over a hundred dollars of petrol. Yeah, and then we never paid for the actual fucking truck either. So we uh, That's so stupid. I think what should have happened was obviously I should have paid for the petrol, but the guy was moved the truck to where it was supposed to be because it was in the way. And obviously it must have been a hard place to park. And then he would have come out and been like, all right, let's fix this up together. But we had just left. <laughs> so and, and then we just weren't answering our phones. <laughs> and I left my wallet in there. He's probably going, this fucking idiot thinks he could rob us. Because we're, you know, we're in Frankston's. So this shit must happen <laughs> all the time. Oh, my God. And then, uh, and then I get there and I'm like, I go, I'll clear this up. Just a simple misunderstanding. And I go, hey, man, I'm so sorry. Just completely blank. And he goes, I've got your wallet. <sighs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. And he goes, so you're going to pay for it or what? I'm like, well, can I have my wallet back? And he goes, after you pay for it. And I went, <laughs> you've got my wallet <laughs> with all my money in it. And he goes, I didn't take anything. I'm not a bloody thief like you. I'm like, dude, just. Give me my card then and I'll go and pay for the petrol and pay for the truck and give it all back. And then anyway, he did not believe me at all. He's like, there's no fucking way this guy forgot to pay for the petrol and the truck. Mm. I'm like, dude, I, I forgot my fucking wallet with like two grand in it and all my SD cards. I am that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but they didn't rob me. How good's that? Driving unlicensed, stealing petrol and not paying for a truck is... Yep. Unreal. Yeah. Hectic. Jazz should have lost her license for six months. 100%. Yeah, she may still, now that I've put this podcast out, if anyone from uh, from Vic Rhodes is watching, uh, yeah, she's she's fucked. Uh, <laughs> so but fucking... we got our bookcases. Oh, good. Yeah, pretty good. Congratulations. Yeah, they're downstairs. They look great. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if uh, just a little note to anyone. If, uh, you rent, if you rent cars or anything, you have to fill them up with petrol and, weirdly, you have to pay for the rental. <laughs> Shocking, I know, but... That's how it works. So that's that's pretty much been my week. Uh, I have a little update on on my health. Uh, uh, my surgery's been delayed till August sometime. I thought it was going to be in June, but now it's going to be August. So uh, that's that's in some ways good because I get some time to rest. That's in other ways bad because I am like the I'm the worst I've ever been in terms of like sickness and and my lack of sleep. I did the there's this test that you can do if you think you have sleep apnea or, or narcolepsy or sleep issues. It's called the, the something sleepiness scale. It's actually an Australian test. I didn't know this. Um, the, th this whole sleep apnea thing is kind of pioneered by Australian research, weirdly. I've, I've found, I didn't know this. But you'll notice it in every, every suburb, in every town, there's like a sleep apnea clinic, like ResMed or there's another one. And they're everywhere. And I thought that was just like the world. That's just Australia. 
apparently it's like super we pioneered the research like sleep studies and all that kind of bullshit that's australians that have done that um but it'll be it'll be a, a big thing in america i guess uh, it, imminently with how fat they all are um but when i first did the sleepiness scale when i first started going to the doctors going oh i feel tired all the time i think i have a vitamin d deficiency or something or, or I, I'm, I'm not eating enough red meat uh when i first did the test that started me on this journey of getting diagnosed i got a I got a nine it, it goes all the way up to 24 24 is the highest and i got a nine which is like in the middle of the range of like you shouldn't be this tired uh and they were like oh this could be normal but it shouldn't be normal for someone of your age who is not obese basically so they started me down the the process and that's how they figured out i've got the recessed jaw and, and bad sleep apnea and everything uh, i did the i did the test uh the doctor was like oh you need to get the surgery because it's going to get gradually worse and that was that was like 2020 right at the start of 2020 i think uh just before covid kicked off um, and, uh, he was not fucking around. I did the sleep, the sleepiness scale, uh, yesterday. I got a 19, <laughs> I had a what? 19, which is, uh, four, what? Five points away from the max. I got a 19 and they, and they categorize that as dangerously sleepy. How did, what is the test? So, uh, oh, we can do it. It's only, it's only, it's only like, uh, 20 questions, right? Uh, or 20, I think, uh, 20 something questions. The sleepiness scale test, okay? And it's basically the Epworth sleepiness scale. It's basically uh, from zero to three, how sleepy are you? And it's basically how likely are you to fall asleep during these activities? Um, so, sleeping and re uh, sitting and reading, Keelan, one, uh, zero to three, how likely are you to fall asleep? Zero. Uh, I'm a three. Um, watching television. Uh, two. I'm a three. Uh, sitting inactive in a public place. Example, a theater or a meeting. <laughs> Zero. Yeah, I'm probably a two. <laughs> I f I, dude, I fell asleep. This has never happened. <laughs> You've seen me fall asleep backstage at shows and shit. So that's, that's, <laughs> that used to happen a little bit. I've fallen asleep in public twice this week uh, at... Uh, my girl's auntie and uncle's house. Oh. I just fell asleep, like talking to there's kids around. There's like four people around. I just fell asleep in my chair. Um, I remember one time it was start of last year. We were having a meeting at the misfits office. Yeah. And we're all sitting around yeah. and me and Luke must've just been talking. And then we, asked you a question and you'd fallen asleep <laughs> in between the time that you just hadn't spoken for maybe two minutes. Yeah. It's that bad. <laughs> It's like it's really funny, and and then and then it's you. <laughs> You're like, fuck! I can't stay awake. Uh, as a passenger in a car for an hour without a break, uh, zero three. Yep. Um, lying down to rest in the oven afternoon when see I can't even read. My brain doesn't work anymore. Lying down to rest in the afternoon when circumstances permit. Ah, uh, two. Uh, yeah, I'm a three. Uh, <laughs> sitting and talking to someone. Zero. I'm like a one. If I'm like like this, I'll stay awake. Mm. But if there's a lot of people, if I have like a five <laughs> minutes to like not talk and just listen, if I'm not speaking, it's boring. <laughs> I'm going to fall asleep. Uh, two more questions. Sitting quietly after a lunch without alcohol. Uh, two. Uh, one. I'd give myself a one. I'm probably like a two. Yeah. Um. In the car while while stopped for a few minutes in the traffic. <laughs> Zero. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't drive. Yeah. But I have fallen asleep on buses and trains when I when I need to be paying attention to where I'm getting. So I'm gonna put that at like a one. Yeah. Maybe. I love it's hilarious what the questions imply. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like like that last one is like if you if you score a one, really, like you probably shouldn't be driving. Yeah, but at there's all. someone out there scoring a three. Yeah, and I they're know. waiting at the red light. So what did I get? Three, six, uh, eight, eleven, fourteen, fifteen, seventeen, eighteen. I got an eighteen this time. So uh, yeah, I float between an eighteen and a nineteen. Uh and and nineteen Okay, so score of, I think you would have gotten like se seven to eight, I think. Okay, so normal. Yeah, so, uh, well, score one to six is enough sleep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so seven, eight is tend to be sleepy during the day. 
Um, so 9 to 15. I think I got a 9 when I first started with this. Very sleepy. A score of 16 plus. <laughs> dangerously sleepy. Which is a cool cool show name. Dangerously sleepy. That's good. Write down, write yeah, down. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I get an 18 or a 19 every time I do this for the last two weeks. Uh, and... Uh, it's so fucked. Yeah, I just fall asleep now during doing anything. Um, That's so good. Yeah. So August, I never thought I would be looking forward to these surgeries, but I'm. I can't fucking wait. Mm. I'm stoked. Uh, so so August, which means I've. Uh, it's basically two months away, I think, because it'll probably happen. We're halfway through May. It'll probably happen halfway through August. I have my meeting with the surgeon uh, in the next couple of weeks to design my new head which will be exciting. Comment your suggestions down below. Any, Basically what I need is I need um, really handsome models, celebrities, uh, actors that, that look like a much more handsome version of me. Because you can't turn my head into Chris Hemsworth. I don't look anything like him, all right? Basically what I'm looking for is who am I an uglier version of and then send me that guy. I've gotten, uh, I've gotten a, a bit of Benedict Cumberbatch, which I kind of see the face shape of. That's not really. Um, I've gotten uh, Alexander Skarsgård, which I do see. We have a similar shaped eyes. He's ballistically handsome. I don't think I'll ever be that attractive, but I think that if you put like a good jawline on me, I could be like a a, a, a slightly less uglier version of him because <laughs> he's like really good looking. Um, and then there's been a couple of others that people have suggested. Nice. You kind of have this face shape of Patrick Bateman. You reckon? Yeah, I'm just looking at that photo you have over there. Yeah, maybe. You have a similar shape. Yeah, if I had, yeah, if that's basically it's shape of of you know what it is. If I look like any celebrity from the cheekbones up, yeah, like oh yeah, yeah, then- forehead, eyes, cheekbones, and nose. That's send me that, and then I'll go give me their chin. <laughs> that's because everything from below cheekbones is changing. So that's what I'm looking for. Um, so yeah, that, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but it kind of fucks up my what I thought was going to happen with the next. It's funny, like that surgery. Cha- I thought it was going to happen in June. It being pushed back two months kind of fucks up the next eighteen months of what I thought was going to happen. What I thought was going to happen was I would kind of relax after the comedy festival, get the surgery, uh, recover from it, and then tour in like September, October. Uh, but now I won't be recovered until like November, December, I reckon. So I can't tour. Uh, so that I, and I thought I would be able to go to the UK, uh, maybe like before or just after the surgery as well. That can't happen now because I kind of need to be here uh, making videos and making money before the surgery. And then afterwards, I wouldn't travel in November, December. So now I'm like, well, fuck, what's going to happen next year? I'm thinking that maybe next year at the start of the year before the comedy festival, because I'm like, oh, well, I can't really leave Australia before the comedy festival next year now because the year will start. I'm probably not going to travel in January because that's my that's my birthday. And January, January will probably be the first month I'll be okay, yep. like after like normal and re- properly recovered. So I'll probably want to enjoy my time like living and, and breathing. So then- then we're in February. Now I can start doing things, mm. but the comedy festival starts in March. Yeah. So I can't really fuck around. So I'm thinking, well, maybe I'll just do fucking nothing all this year other than upload videos and do the podcast and stuff. And then maybe if I'm going to be here for the comedy festival, that ties me in Australia until the end of April. I might as well do like a giant fucking mega tour of Australia because I'm going to be here. The time will pass anyway. I might as well fill it with shows and I can't really leave Australia beforehand. So I'm kind of playing with the idea of maybe doing like a giant fuck off 40 date everywhere tour next year with my new chin. Cause I think I'd, I'd be able to do it if I were healthy. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause man right now, not to bum everyone out. I am so fucking unbelievably sick and tired. It's fucked. I've got this Buddhist video that I, that I had, that I had to release two weeks ago. <laughs> Like almost written. I've spent the entire week just writing like a couple of paragraphs a day because my brain doesn't work, and then I go to bed. Um, so I'm I'm excited for it. But basically, what what I think is going to happen with the rest of my year is I'm just going to upload as much as I can 
on YouTube. Uh, I'm going to keep the podcast going because that's what that's what Keelan Bot has been helping me with uh, is is the podcast, and we'll keep the Patreon podcast going. Um, and uh, I'm just going to up basically what I said in my in my video. I'm I'm back as a sick person, and I think the only thing I'm I'm going to be able to commit to is is yeah, Spearhead Sundays every Sunday, hopefully, and then videos on YouTube whenever I'm like able. I really want to get this Buddhist one done. I have an amazing video with a massive OnlyFans girl, like a day in her life thing. I think it's really funny and exciting. That's on the back burner. And then whatever I'm able to do, I think I'm just not going to promise anything because I'm, I'm, I think, yeah, I'm just really fucking sick and I'm going to be sick until I get this surgery. So I'm happy that it's, that it's happening and it seems to be ending. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on with me. Um, how exciting. Um, but thank you for all, all your messages and all your patience and everything. I know I've been like on and off and disappearing and going away, but, uh, I, I think now is like the, now the festival's done. It's like, all right, now I'm going to be sick. Cause that fucking wrecked me doing that. Uh, and then all of the stress of the protests and all that kind of bullshit as well. That was, uh, that was heaps at the end there. Exciting and fun and awesome. I'm happy that it happened, but fuck, it took a lot out of me. Um, so yeah, what else did we, we want to talk about here? Uh, oh yeah, I'm doing a charity gig tonight, uh, for my, for the animal shelter that saved my dog. That'll be exciting. Uh, I guess I'll talk about that next week. Ho hopefully I don't bomb. Here's what I'm worried about with the charity gig. All right. Um, I don't know how many of my fans are going to be there cause they've been promoting it. They've got a big online audience. Uh, and, uh, uh, I imagine that people that support charities are really nice, like people. Yeah, and I don't, <laughs> I don't know how well my jokes are going to gel with that audience. I'm going to do all of my animal stuff, but I'm realizing that a lot of my animal stuff is, oh, I adopted a dog that I thought was going to be a staffy, but then it turned out to be a pit bull, and then it, like twenty minutes of jokes about my dog mauling toddlers. <laughs> oh, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Which it's never done, but it's funny <laughs> to imagine. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like. I think about 10 minutes of my gear is I got catfished by this fucking pound and they and they ripped me off and I didn't want a pit bull now. I've got one. I hope it doesn't kill a kid. So maybe I can't do that. But then the, the only stuff that I'm left with is like fucking pretty dark stuff. I'm going to have to go through the vaults and pull out my silly stuff because I don't know how well my shit's going to gel. How much, How long are you doing? Oh, like an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I thought you were doing 10 minutes. No, I'm headlining. Oh, what? what? you think I'm not going to go well in front of the, the, <laughs> can't do the, the animal lovers? You can't do the mauling one. How funny would it be if I bombed, you know? Yeah. Because they reached out to me because they, they, they knew that I had like a profile and stuff. They thought it would be like a good thing to, to like, which I love and I want to support them. Um, but how funny would it be if, we, if, if it was like a, a, a great success uh, financially and then just like event wise an abysmal failure mm. like yeah yes we raised all this money fuck it was a horrible event the comedian kept talking about dogs biting children and rapist cats yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah basically all of my jokes <laughs> i'm just realizing now all of my jokes about uh, adopting animals are, are like oh it was fucking shit i should have bought one which is the joke of like obviously you shouldn't support buying animals but i don't know if it will go go over well like that's like um that would be like um me headlining an oxfam gig like the for the people that that support like impoverished children in third world nations and being like oh how much better is making one of your own i adopted one it was an awful mistake it do doesn't fit in with my other children you know um but we'll see how we go might be a laugh you know what? At the very least, it'll be funny next episode if I bomb. <laughs> so at least you guys will laugh. No, I think it'll be fun. I hope. Dear God, I hope it'll be fun. Um, all right. So uh, we have uh, we've got a, 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 a little news article here, Keelan, that you that you wanted me to talk about. Yeah. What do we have here? Um, do you want me to send it to you? Yes. Uh, which one? The the Tucker Carlson or the Live Nation? Send me the Tucker Carlson one because this is this is fascinating. Um, from what I understand. Someone, uh, Tucker Carlson got let go from Fox News for whatever reason, and someone called uh, Alex Jones with an, with an AI recreation of Tucker Carlson's voice, like on a soundboard or something, and spoke to Alex Jones. Uh, and Alex believed that it was Tucker. Is that right? 
Uh, yes. Qu- uh, let me find. Sorry, let me just find this. Maybe we'll just cut this a little bit out. Oh, sorry. I thought you you knew a little bit about it. No, that's all that I know. This is the this is Spearhead Sundays where we don't do any research. And also, I won't be cutting this out. I'm far too sick to be editing the podcast and 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 removing dead air. Um, oh, Keelan would like to airdrop. Oh, let me try. Um, no, that's that's come through. I think here we go. Rolling Stone. Uh, Alex Jones wants this comedian arrested over a prank call. Fuck! <laughs> I'm so jealous of this headline. How this is such a Spears headline? Who's this guy that did this? What a legend! When Alex Jones picked up a call from Tucker Carlson's number, oh man! So he spoofed the number as well. See, this is the era that we're entering in where. Your scams aren't going to be like telling your grandma not to give money to the like Nigerian prince who's been emailing her. Like that's not the scam anymore. The scam is going to be your mum calling you from her phone number crying saying that she needs $80 for petrol and she's on the side of the road. And that's going to be a robot that is calling 10,000 people an hour as their mothers from their phone numbers. Like anyone who has like any sort of fucking online presence, their voice will be cloned and will be used to scam their fans, will be used to scam their friends and family. Because like, you know, someone like me, right? I'm not a fucking millionaire, but I know a lot of them, you know, like a lot of YouTubers with a lot of fucking money that are genuinely my friends. Like people can just fucking spoof my voice and ask them for money. Yeah. Like, I reckon that's going to be a real problem. Every Twitch streamer who's like, you know, who feasibly could come into money trouble. You know, you could use my voice and go, oh man, I can't afford my surgery. I need help. Send money here from my number. Do it right now. You'll get hit. Don't do it because I'm about to ask all of these people. (laughs) (laughs) But like, that's, that's the new scam that's going to start happening is, is it's going to be like actual voices from your real life. It has started happening a little bit around here as well, where mothers Mm. will get called um, being like, oh, I'm in jail. You need to send three thousand dollars to pick me up. Or wow! They'll go to the the mother will then go to the police place, and the the guy won't be there. That's scary. Because the I guess station. I don't know if you're if you're targeting like a like a forty year old guy to call their mother. If you make the fa- the phone line bad and the mum's older mm. and they, their hearing's not so good anymore, like you could just use your real voice. And as long as you have the right accent, yeah, they'd probably believe it. Especially if you make the call sound all garbled and fucked and say, you know, I've only got a minute 30 before the phone call ends. Beep, beep, it hangs up. Please send money to my PayPal. Yeah. The prison's PayPal. It's crazy. Um, all right, so uh, the InfoWars founder had what he would later call one of the most bizarre events of his life. Uh, I find that hard to believe as Alex Jones' life. Uh, I was thinking we could do a show together where we're topless and we suck each other's nipples and sort of play with them for a bit. Carlson's voice said... It would be a comment on gender roles, sort of a funny parody thing. That's really great that the comedian has just gone, let's try and get Alex Jones to agree to having sex with Tucker Carlson. While the conservative radio host uh, has said some wild things on his show before he was unceremoniously ousted from Fox, it was not Tucker Carlson on the end of the line. It was an AI spoof call. Comedian Chris James, the brain behind the brank call, tells Rolling Stone he came up with the idea while sitting on a toilet. My channel is basically a reaction to the online world becoming so overwhelmingly bad. So I'm seeing all of this stuff that is constantly happening and how it's making everyone mad and feeling hopeless. And I just thought it would be try it would be nice to try and bring some humor into the situation where people can find a look at it uh, and have a bit of a laugh. I like this guy. I should follow this dude. He sounds uh, doing similar stuff to me. That's awesome. Um, man. All right. I want to see what uh, Jones said. <clears throat> He thinks it's funny to call up Alex Jones and say, suck on my titties, Jones said during (laughs) his Thursday broadcast. He stole Tucker Carlson's identity. He faked his number. He faked his voice. He called me and made sexual threats, basically. And he just thinks it's funny because in this sociopathic world, I don't exist. Alex Jones is fair game for any attack. So is Tucker Carlson. We're going to find out who you're working with, buddy. Yeah, you're working with the communist elite. After James... (laughs) After Chris James refused to go on... Why did he refuse? That'd be so funny. James doubled down on the rhetoric. uh, Jones doubled down on the rhetoric, both on screen and off, calling for the comedian to be arrested and saying he will be filing a criminal complaint. 
Tucker Carlson's lawyers are involved and what you did, we believe, is a crime. So even though you think you're safe up in Canada, you're going to get arrested for what you did yesterday, Jones said. So you keep laughing, you little arrogant person. Yeah, see, that's fucking lame. Take the joke. That's funny, all right? Because the comedian, look, he could have gone, I guess, the criminal route and try and get you to agree to do something or, or, or you know, send money or actually scam you or get you to say something that, that's fucked. But all he really did was say an obscene thing that obviously Tucker Carlson would never say. Mm. Uh, so at least he's been kind to you in that respect. I think that's fucking free speech, buddy. Apparently, Welcome to it. Jones then spent 30 minutes talking about it on his show. That's so funny. He dedicated like a quarter of the show. To I mean, it's guy. it's scary. Like, the, I think that's the... That's because we're now seeing like real time voice extrapolation where you speak and the voice changes like without much of a delay. And you're also now seeing the same shit of like 3D animation where they, where where eventually we're basically not going to have to animate every frame of a 3D animation. You'll just create a 3D model and then film an actual person, not even wearing the green dot suit, just filming them and their face and their mannerisms will be done by this person so eventually it's going to get so good where you could just get me to fucking stand in front of a camera and it's donald trump speaking with his voice exactly doesn't even look like a 3d animation and it's real time so i could fucking skype someone as you know their mum or their dad and it will look like them yeah that's fucking scary dude that's that's coming something i've found a lot on youtube now is those like content farm channels using other people's voices using casey neistat or tech uh, Linus Tech Tips voice yep. to make these like just content Reddit farm and yes. not even not even saying that it's their voice. Yeah, just it's just like a it's like a familiar brand or a familiar color or something that that reminds you of something and yeah. and you just think that it's them or or even if you know that it's not them, it's just like comfortable to listen to because it's a guy that you know or a girl you know. Yeah, yeah. That I think that's going to be the next hustle for a lot of YouTubers as well is YouTubers cloning their own voices and outsourcing content creation on their second channels to just like editors and script writers that scrape Reddit. Uh, that's going to be the thing next. Uh, like it's something that, that uh, you know, if I were a YouTuber YouTuber, I would 100% do. Like instead of fucking running my own Reddit channel or running my own story time channel or running my own life advice channel or whatever the fuck, you know, all those YouTubers and creators that run channels where they just read Reddit posts. Like if you can clone your voice well enough where it doesn't, People can't tell that it's not you. Like, they're all going to outsource that shit um, for sure. Um, I think it's this one. The lucky thing is that with us having Australian accents, we sound, we're not able to have our voices cloned yet. Yeah. I've got one of you. Big day, cunts. Welcome back to Lou Review. In this video, I am buying Phil Dog's channel and uploading far right propaganda to see if we can prank those woke moralists. Wow. That sounds exactly like me with an, that sounds like me doing a perfect. American, American accent. accent. That's so weird. It always. I've showed a few people that one. It always really tricks them because they think the start is actually you. Yeah, man, that's fucking. When it figures out accents, our our friend uh, Whitey is 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 trying to uh, is running an oh, emulation, Whitey. trying to create like an Australian accent oh, uh, really? off his own graphics card. So he reckons it can be done, but locally on your machine. He's he's been running it for like an entire week trying to get it to clone this specific Australian person's voice and it's getting there. So it can be done. It mm. just can't be done with those paid services that, that like I used to create the Donald Trump and Joe Biden thing. Mm. Um, so yeah, when it can, when it doesn't need to uh, work hard to create accents, this thing's going to be fucking unstoppable. I mean, it all, all, almost already is. Yeah. Um, At this right. point, if you're not, looking out for it you can be tricked but if you know what to look for you can hear the yeah the but i i reckon you i think there's maybe maybe a year left with at least the voice thing there's maybe a year left of you being able to tell yeah and then it's just gonna have to be like anything that you don't see you know what's funny about this i think we might have to go back to trusting mainstream media like it might completely fucking turn around now 
and be like the only interviews and speeches and things that we can actually verify are true are the ones that actually appear on the social media channels of like mainstream media. Like any organization that is big enough to be sued for millions of dollars, they might be the only like sources that we can trust for like legitimate interviews of politicians and maybe even like A-list celebrities. You know, well, it's kind of true because now anytime so- something Joe Biden says comes out that's crazy, mm. I just don't believe it, and then I look it up myself to see if he actually said it. Yeah, and and you'll only believe it if it's if it's by like CNN yeah. or Fox News, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, because they're so big they can be sued. Whereas all these other like previously, I would trust like people in terms of mm. quotes, and I still will now. But when it comes to like yeah, like crazy Joe Biden things or Donald Trump things, if I don't see Fox News and CNN say that he said this quote, I don't believe that it actually happened. And they'll put their own spin on it. But I'm talking about like the actual. Did he say this sentence? Is this video that I watched actually real? I think it's going to be yeah, only mainstream media sources that we're actually going to trust when it comes to interviews and speeches and shit like that, which is really scary and weird to think of. The first fully AI developed um, political advertisement came out two weeks ago. So someone had AI write it, someone had AI narrate it, and then they just edited it together. And But what was it for? Uh, like someone running for Senate oh, in, wow. in America. But it was an actual person like using his voice and stuff? Yeah. Was, but- did he say that it was done by AI? No, someone else worked it out. Wow. I was, yeah, yeah cuz that's that's the thing like like what I was talking about with those YouTubers like instead of them running you know five secondary channels where like what you can have now is if uh if I were a big YouTuber and I had an American accent so you could clone my voice if I was just a guy that made YouTube videos I would have a fucking history channel a philosophy channel a reddit reading channel all this like I, you could have 10 fucking channels where it, as long as it's just my voice reading facts or reading content written by other people yeah just fucking clone it and it's a money printer and it's so easy because instead of getting me in for fucking 10 hours a day reading lines for these five different channels that are uploading every single day you just have a team of assistant editors that fucking plug this this text into your speech machine and now everyone goes oh how the fuck does lewis spears know so much about history and world war ii and philosophy and cooking and and cars and everything. He knows everything about everything. Yeah. You know, it's my voice, but it's not me. Have you seen, this might be going off track a bit, but there's all these like video essay YouTube channels mm. where they talk about movies or whatever. Yeah. And there's this one guy who keeps keeps getting caught for plagiarism called Nerdstalgic. I think I've I've heard about this. Yeah. And his claim is he doesn't write the scripts. He doesn't, he barely looks at them. He just narrates them and then sends it off to get edited somewhere else. Oh, so his script writers are plagiarizing and he yeah. doesn't know. Yeah, um, interesting. My thought is that the words are never word for word the same. So mm. the script writer must be downloading a video, transcribing it, chucking it in chat GPT and say, rewrite this. Yeah. I think that's what's happening in a lot of channels now. Well, man, you know what I did the other day? I was, uh, I started reading this um, fantasy book the second book in this series i'd read the first one like a year ago over a year ago maybe even longer so i didn't want to read it again so i started on book two but then it started referencing things that i just didn't know about so instead of like googling it uh where you often find spoilers for like the entire series i had questions about book one about things that clear like big plot points that clearly would go through multiple books so i'm like if i google I was reading Wizards First Rule. So I go, what are the boxes of Auden, right? Those things are obviously going to be important in future books, but I don't want to get spoiled. I went into ChatGPT and I go, in, uh, without f- spoiling books after this book, tell me everything about the boxes of Auden. And it does this. And I did that for all the characters that came up in the book. I would just ask it instead of Googling it. And, and, it, and I go, you know, this character comes up and I go, tell me every significant thing they did in the book. And it just tells me. And I go, Beautiful. So what I could do is I could do that with every single movie. I could go write a 10 minute YouTube script summarizing this film uh, while making a point about this and it'll do it. And then I just give that to my fucking AI guy to do my voice. And then there's my Lewis Spears summarizes movies channel. Which we're launching next week. Which we are launching next week. We should just, fuck it, man. Let's just do it. Like we call it Lewis Spears with an American accent. 
movie I reviews. Wonder, I wonder if anyone would notice. Let's do it. Let's see. Spears reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so, st- st- yeah, that, that you know what? That's going to be my YouTube channel when I go under the knife. When I can't speak for three months, I'm going to have an American accent. I am actually going to do that video. I did have that video idea of... Um, I want to, before I go under the knife, I want to, I'm going to write the script myself of a video, just like talking about the experience or, or maybe just a video that has nothing to do with my surgery. Just a, like a funny video about, I don't know, fucking anything yeah. taking the, you know, plane travel. Right. But I ride it and then I get you to come over like a few days after my surgery, my face is fucked up. I'm off my head on pain pills and I want you to just film me gesturing in bed, swollen, fucked, bruised face, blood dribbling, oh. all this shit, multiple different angles. I probably won't even remember you doing it. And then I want you to take the script and put my voice through the AI thing and get my voice to narrate it. And then you edit it and we upload it on the channel. Uh, and people go, wow, Lewis is such a hard worker. I, I can't believe the surgery gave him an American accent. <laughs> I think that's a really funny video idea. Yeah. We're going to do that. Um, all right, I think we're going to end it there, guys, um, because uh, the, the SD card's going to fill up. Actually, we've got time for one email, I think. Yeah, all right. Well, maybe we don't. Let's see. And we'll swap the cards out because this one, look, I'll just read the, the subject line. If you want to send an email to the show, podcast at loosebeers.com. If you have some life advice, a story you think I would like to hear, a question, email it to podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, subject line, my ex lost her virginity to a dog. Oh, what? Hey, Lewis, you can call me Sam. I really don't know how to explain this, so I'll do my best to sum it up because I figured you would have a good laugh at this. I've been dating this girl on and off for a few months, and the first time we had sex, I noticed she had a paw print tattooed on her crotch. Should have been a red flag, but I didn't think anything of it. No, that's not really a red flag. Paw print, common tattoo. It's like, for some reason, a sexy thing that trashy girls will have sometimes. Paw prints, leopard prints, all the kind of stuff. Yeah. Should have been a red flag, but I didn't think anything of it. So after we'd been dating for maybe a month, I asked her about the tattoo. She got defensive and said it was just a tattoo. So I dropped it and we continued dating. I finally asked her again almost a month ago, but this time she said it was for her old family dog. I kept saying, that's a strange place for a memento for a dead dog. Yeah, I lost my family dog this year and there's no way I would get a tattoo near my balls <laughs> oh, to remember her by. Like every time I look down at my dick, I see my, my dead dog. It's, that's, 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 now, I'm, now I'm on board with the red flag. Um, so uh, I, I asked her again and she said it was for an old family dog. I kept saying that was a weird place for a memento for a dead dog until she finally told me it wasn't because he died, but because he took her virginity. I was completely caught off guard. It was kind of like when someone slaps you and you're just standing there like, what the fuck just happened? Man, you must have been a good boyfriend. Like, she trusts you, dude. Like, whatever you're doing, you're nailing it. You shouldn't do it with her, but you're a great partner. Uh, She just kept trying to defend herself, but the whole time I was just thinking... uh, Oh, sorry. Um, The whole time I was just thinking, well, you wouldn't get a tattoo from having sex with a dog once and then regretting it. Yeah, that's true. You don't get a tattoo from like a, from something. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. You know, like one time, one time I uh, I I I went rogue at like a Chinese uh, restaurant and I ordered uh, rice porridge and it wasn't very good. If I got a tattoo <laughs> of the meal, that would be strange. You know, like if I really fucking loved rice porridge, I might get a tattoo of it. Also. Don't dogs have little webs in their penises that when they're having sex, it like opens up so the female can't get out of it? Have you had sex with a dog? (laughs) Uh, I went to high school in France. No, I think you're thinking of cats. That's cats. Yeah. Yeah. I know this because we had to look up the the ramifications of if he managed to get one of our cats. (laughs) (sighs) Please take him. Um I kept thinking you would not get a tattoo from having sex with a dog once and then regretting it. She obviously liked it and probably had sex with him multiple times. I had so many questions running through my head. It was like my brain got flashbanged. I didn't know what to do, so I just left. I blocked her number and every social media account she had. Yeah, great job, dude. With really healthy response. I went to my buddy's place and we just drank the rest of the night away. After a few days, I unblocked her. Okay, I take it back. 
and I tried to talk to her, but I couldn't stop thinking about the dog and her, and it just grossed me out. <laughs> so I broke up with her, and I told her she should look out, look for some. She should, and I told her she should. Sorry, this guy has not included a single paragraph in this email, which I'm going to forgive because of what he's been through. Uh, so I broke up with her, and I told her she should look for for someone else at the dog shelter. <laughs> oh. That's a good one. There, that was something. Uh, she didn't even seem like the type to fuck dogs, but does anyone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. I can't picture the type of girl in my mind that would fuck a dog. She was always so shy and nervous when it came to sex. Wouldn't like to experiment. I just thought it was because she was religious. I guess I'm an idiot. Yeah, it was maybe because you only had two legs. <laughs> Anyway, I would like to buy some pears, have a shit one, uh, Sam out. That's, dude, that's fucking wild. I don't know what to think. I'm, my brain's, I'm too tired for this. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, she she must have, maybe the tattoo was like, um, like, what do they call it? A dog whistle. <laughs> <laughs> you know those, those things the, the racist people use? Like, oh, check out my little frog or whatever the fuck they use to signal their yeah. the the okay symbol you know maybe it's like that for people who, who fuck dogs does that mean anything if you have a, a paw print tattoo near your privates is that like a a thing to signal people paw print tattoo on crotch meaning i hope it doesn't have a meaning maybe it does Oh my god, it literally means you love dogs and is also a way for zoophiles to recognize each other. No way! Oh my god, see, <laughs> that's why she didn't want to tell you because you didn't know what it meant. If you looked down at that tattoo and were like, oh, you're into fucking dogs, she would be like, you're into fucking dogs. Because if you knew what that meant, you'd be into it. Well, that was a great little test, kill, and you, you've passed with flying colours. You didn't know what that meant. Neither did I. <laughs> if anyone listened to this show and knew what that meant, stop listening. I'm not interested in being around you. Man, that's fucking crazy. Dude. That is... Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, I'm seeing a lot of... Yeah, every single result I'm getting means, yeah, that's... So funny. I guess we're going to have to end the podcast there. That's that's amazing. You learn something new every day. Spearhead Sundays is back, baby. We're learning horrible sex things with every episode. Um, thank you very much for listening. Support uh, the show on Patreon. There's a, we're going to record a Patreon episode right now. Uh, it goes up early for Patreon supporters. And it's uh, the only way that I'm making money uh, until my surgery. So I would really, really, really love to get to 500 Patreon supporters before August. That's when my surgery happens. That's what's literally going to fucking pay for my food and my care while I am uh, uh, recovering from surgery. So that's how we're going to do it. I don't want to do a crowdfund thing. I just want to do Patreon because... Uh, you get exclusive content I get to give back to you guys and uh, while I'm under the knife uh, Jazz and Keelan are going to be running the accounts uh, giving you guys a little bit to, uh, of behind the scenes uh, of my recovery like we did last time with my surgery so uh, thanks for listening I'll see you over on Patreon and I'll talk to you next Sunday I hope you have a shit one bye <laughs>